Welcome back. Well, it's Project Sunday again, and last week we started a project with a little rug, and we are going to continue that. We're going to take this project to the conclusion this week. So, when we come back... Okay, last week we had our little rug that uh, Colleen Staver had purchased for me. And um, I, I, I love this little rug. Last week we cleaned it, removed the staples, removed the ratty fringe, and basically got the rug from sort of scruffy and dirty. It had been on a store floor, so you got to know it had a lot of traffic, and you got to know that it needed a cleaning, no matter how well those people keep their shop. It's open to the public, and people are walking on this rug. It's going to see more traffic than any rug in an ordinary home would see. So, we brought it the first half of the way. We sort of undid the damage, got rid of the dirt, got rid of the torn fringe, and we got the rug to where it is now. And since I don't want to make you have to go back and look at that video to refresh your memory, or if you didn't see it, you know, I'm going to show you the little slideshow I made of that process. So, take a look. This is what we did last week. <laughs> Now this week, 
I have the same little slideshow, and I thought I would do it the same way I did it last week. I'll show you the slideshow, what's going on, then we'll talk about it, then I'll show you the slideshow again when you'll have more of a frame of reference. So, let me know if you like this method of conveying the information, because, you know, the... The medium is the message, as Noam Chomsky used to say. The fact is that there are a lot of ways to present information, and I want to give you the information in the way that is best for you. Uh, so, throwing this out, if you like it this way, let me know, because I'm just thinking this would work for me, but I'm not you. So, this week, let's take a look at what we did this week. So this is second half of the rug project. And then we'll talk about the steps. thing I did was, uh, and, and I did this as soon as that rug came home with me, was I went online and ordered uh, the new fringe and, most importantly, the new rug pad. But I ordered two rug pads. So that first uh, slide you saw was the two rug pads together so you could see the difference. The rug pad I ordered for my new rug is 3 8 inch thick, felt with rubber. The other one that I ordered, and that's for the little rug, both of these rugs are 2 by 3 and we mentioned that last week, it's a class size. They are approximately 2 by 3 not exactly. So the other little 2 by 3 in front of the door I got a quarter inch thick pad. I didn't need anything quite so thick. The new rug is a good quality rug. I'm, I'm sorry, the one in front of the door is a good quality rug. It has a very dense pile. It's modern. It's not an Iranian oriental rug. Uh, so this is contemporary. I believe it's from India. It was and, and still is a nice piece and it will wear a hundred years just on that pile alone because like i say high quality a high quality rug will last for generations but a good pad 
will make it last even longer. So I figured while I was getting one pad for a small rug, might as well get one for this because I had never gotten a good pad for that rug. I had just, you know, whatever I happened to come across at the time. That is a major mistake, by the way. If you're going to put money into anything, seriously, put it into the pad over the rug. Because a good rug pad will not only really enhance a good rug, but it will make a lesser rug feel and wear like a more expensive one. And rug pads, even really, really high quality ones, are not expensive. So, let's take a look at the pad I got. This is the leftover. For the new rug, I got a 3x3 three three pad because although the rugs, when I say 2x3 is a class size, not when it comes to pads. You buy a 2x3 pad, it's going to be 24 inches by 36 inches. And I really wanted the pad for this new rug to be 25 inches wide because that rug is 27 inches by 35. Not exactly 2x3, two 2x3 by three, two by three class size. I wanted that extra inch. And I was willing to pay for it. I figure I'm going to have to cut the pad anyway. You know, what difference does it make? So let's take a look. This is felt on this side. Um, all swirly, multicolored. Very pretty. And rubber with a waffle pattern in it. This is raised... Um, I'm sure you can see it looks like a grid. It's a waffle pattern right, it's molded right into the rubber. Between the rubber and the waffle pattern, it will keep the rug in place. It won't shift on the floor. The felt, of course, is going to make it feel very nice underfoot. And here's the thickness. Three-eighths of an inch thick. That is a high quality pad. You can actually get them thicker. You can get them half an inch thick easily, and you can probably get them thicker than that, although I would think that would be a special order. I wouldn't go over three-eighths of an inch for a small rug for a two-by-three, a three-by-five. I wouldn't go more than three-quarters or um, three-eighths of an inch. Half an inch, yeah, for a room-sized rug, 8 by 10 9 by 12 sure. But it's a question of proportion. When you have a small rug, you don't want it this high off the ground. You'll just trip on it. So when I got this rug, I got a slightly lower pad, quarter inch still felt rubber for the other rug, the one that sits in front of my front door. And I could do that for a couple of reasons. For one thing, it's a thicker rug, a uh, very uh, tight, dense pile, which is one of the marks of quality in a rug. Always look for a, a, a thick, dense pile. And it doesn't need the 3 8 inch thick. The other rug, the rug Colleen got for me, well, it's older, it's a little threadbare. Yes, it needs a little extra push. So, it's getting a better pad. And because I don't want to have to give it up anytime soon, I want to keep this, um, like, forever. I'll probably leave it to somebody in my will, but for now, it's mine, mine, all mine. So, that's why I wanted to show you both. They are both good quality rug pads. This one is better. Now, even if I wanted to put this pad under the rug in front of my door, I couldn't. Because that thickness on top of a rug with a thick pile, well, at a quarter of an inch pad, the door is just opening another eighth of an inch and I don't think I could open the door so it wouldn't have worked all right so we got the pad 
We got a good quality pad on the last video. I told you where I got them from. Just go on eBay. That's what I do. You get good prices there, good deals, and you can probably get the rug pad cut to whatever you want. I didn't inquire, but they have to cut it anyway. So it seems to me if they're going to cut you a rug pad, um, you know, probably doesn't make any difference to them what size it is. You know, if you say I want it two inches shorter, I don't think they're going to mind. So the first thing I did once I had the pad, measured the rug. And in fact, I measured two rugs because I was doing this simultaneously and decided how much space I wanted to cover with the pad. In other words, how much overlap because the, the pad has to be smaller than the rug. And I decided for both rugs, I wanted about an inch around on each side. And that was it. Um, and that's why I got the 3x3 three three pad for the rug from Colleen. It was 27 by uh, 35 And I just didn't want an inch and a half. I wanted an inch. I, and I was willing to pay for it. So, you know, I know that sounds a little eccentric. If the price difference had been very, very great, yeah, maybe I would have said, oh, well, it's just a half an inch on either side. But it wasn't, so I could get what I wanted. Now, I brought it out to the schoolhouse through a Walmart box on my work table and got uh, a sharp wallpaper knife, a utility knife, basically and a straight edge. As you may have noticed, the straight edge I use is an aluminum yardstick, so it's metal. Um, I can cut against it, that's why I have that. And I simply cut it with the utility knife. Could you cut it with scissors? Well, yeah, I've done it before. I don't recommend it. Uh, I found it so much easier to cut it with a sharp knife, a straight edge, but of course I needed that box underneath um, to, so I wasn't cutting into the work table. So that was the first thing, and I showed you the little strips that I cut off. Uh, almost always when you get a rug pad, you are going to need to do a little bit of trimming. Not a big deal. Straight edge, sharp knife, you know, you might have to go over it half a dozen times, but you will get it cut. Trust me, don't even think about scissors. It's just, unless you have really big, really sharp scissors and like an incredible amount of hand strength, it's just going to be a nightmare. And just, just don't, just don't use a sharp knife. You'll thank me for it later. So when I got both of the pads cut, I brought them in and then I got scissors because cutting it, and this is the leftover bit, there were little bits of sort of fluff from the felt that were just, well, just the cutting process. You know, you cut and you want to clean it up. And that's what the scissors were for. Just snip, snip anything that just looked out of line because I want the rug pad to look nice. I don't want a scruffy rug pad under the rug. Um, remember, the rug pad is doing all the work, so I want to make sure it's in really good shape. So that was the next thing, getting the rug pad cut. And then after that, it was laying the pad down, putting the rug over it. That's what I did for the rug in front of the door. And I took a picture of that rug so you could see it because like I said, we're talking about two rugs here because I wanted to make sure you could see that rug as well. And that rug, uh, I also showed you a close-up. When I first brought it in, Audie kind of made himself at home on it, and he has been scratching 
on that rug. Now, it's a nice rug, but it's not an antique oriental. I would prefer he didn't scratch on it. I'd rather he go use his scratching post, but I love the cat. He's scratching the rug. What can I say? The great thing about orientals is their patterns are so busy, it's hard to see where the little cat claws go in. So, that pad went down, that rug went down on top of it, that's all I need to do there. But the rug from Colleen sits on its pad, and now we need to talk about the fringe. I had gotten two different kinds of fringe, um, because there was a, a, a certain style of fringe that was on the rug. And I got a fringe that looked a lot like that. Then I also got a fringe that was my idea of what I thought the fringe ought to look like. A little shorter, um, a little darker, just a shade darker. And if you'll recall from last week, when oriental rugs are, are um, when they have the fringe woven in, it's white. Uh, the little rug that I showed in in the slideshow that's in front of my door, fringe is white. That's just the way it is. So the idea that the fringe will be much lighter than the carpet is it's not a problem. That's just a thing with these rugs. But I did like the fact that the second fringe was a little bit darker, just a little. It's still like an off-white, a little darker. I thought it... it was, I thought it was a little more sympathetic, let me put it that way. Uh, it was shorter, and I also thought the rug needed a shorter fringe. Also, it was 100% cotton. The other fringe was a cotton polyester blend, which was, I mean, it's okay. I'm, I'm not, you know, it's not the end of the world if the rug doesn't have 100% cotton, but I just would have preferred that. So I ended up choosing the second fringe, the shorter fringe. I just liked the way it looked against the rug. But the way I did this was I just laid the fringe out and then left it there for a few hours and looked at it and said, which one do I like? Which one do I want? Now, one of the things, and I showed a close-up on the fringe, one of the things I want you to see about this fringe is when you buy it by the yard, when it's all sort of, on the roll, well, actually it's usually on a piece of cardboard, um, the pretend spool, the ends of the fringe are all stitched together. This is really important here. I've got this, where is it here? See, these are the loose ends of the fringe and they are all stitched together. If you had to work with the fringe and the ends were loose, you'd be spending half of your time just brushing the fringe out. So, like I said, this is the one I chose. It's a little shorter. I did not think the longer fringe really suited that rug. And I have not applied the fringe yet. The fringe just arrived yesterday. So, I really have not had a chance. I've, I've been I've been making a video out of this, and I have not been putting it on. There are two ways I can apply this fridge. One is with hot glue. I know a lot of you don't like hot glue, and the other is stitching it. So, stitching it is very easy. This area right here, um, the part that is densely woven, I would stitch with a zigzag stitch back and forth back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to secure that carefully on the rug. First thing you do is you flip over an end about a quarter of an inch. And then you flip it over another inch and that part goes on the underside of the rug. In other words, you don't just put this end on the end and now we're going to turn it over and then run it 
under, so the rug goes in between. And it just wraps around the edge of the rug. And then you just stitch. Process is very much the same with the hot melt glue. Turn it over, put a dab of glue, glue it to the back side, and then carefully glue it to the front. I haven't decided which I'm going to do yet. Um, the ordinary complaints about hot melt glue are that the hot melt glue does not hold up well to uh, changes in temperature. But this isn't going outdoors. It'll be roughly at room temperature for the rest of its life. So I don't have to worry about that. Uh, also, keep in mind that upholstery trim is applied with hot glue. So this clearly trim, um, I'm not seeing a problem applying trim to a rug with hot glue if I would apply trim to a chair with hot glue. It's a very quick and easy way of doing it, and it really will hold up for many, many years. But as I say, I just have not decided which way I'm going to go with that. Um, either way, you know, we're going to have a shorter fringe. When it's done, I will pull this thread. And this thread will just pop right out and we'll have the loose fringe. Uh, and I'll be tasseling and pretty and whatnot. But I did get you a picture. I, I simply put the fringe in place so you could see what it will look like when that's done. And that's something that's going to be done you know, probably this weekend. I'm, I'm probably going to do this uh, within the next day or two. Get that straightened out. And then I'm going to have to figure out where I'm going to put the rug. I haven't decided yet. I need to, right now it's staying near my desk so I can look at it. It's probably going to stay near my desk for a long time so I can look at it. And then I might eventually decide to move it somewhere that it's not in my immediate line of vision all day long. Or not. Maybe I'll just... Leave it sitting right next to my desk, and that will be where it sits. Who knows? But anyway, this is very much the end of the rug project. So we brought it to completion. Again, don't lose sight of the fact that the most important step in this is the pad. Now, this little rug, which is old, and it is threadbare. There's no two ways around it. It's still got plenty of life in it, and it's that pad that's going to do it. Oh, and one of the things I forgot to mention, I should have mentioned this last week, There, when I pull the rug back from the pad in one of those uh, pictures, I did it so you could see how much rug was hanging over the edge of the pad. It also showed you the underside of the rug and there is a strip of dark schmutz on the back of the rug. At some point somebody had taped down this little rug and don't do it. Do not. Uh, that's going to make a mess of your rug. It's going to make a mess of your floor. It's the same reason you don't want to get a cheap rug pad. They will crumble and deteriorate. They can damage your rugs. They can damage your floors. And I've seen that happen. I have seen inferior rug pads stain beautiful oak floors. And it's like a beautiful oak floor. And suddenly there's this like weird yellow green patch because the, the um, artificial chemicals they used to make whatever that, that jute pad was, a uh, polyester. I, I don't know what they're making the cheap rug pads out of, but it's, it's all chemicals. They, the pad deteriorated. It decomposed. The chemicals leached into the floor. The floor turned a weird yellow green. No, no. Believe me, you don't want that kind of mess. I've seen messes on rugs 
I've seen messes on floors. And if you can't get a good rug pad, pass on the pad altogether. Don't put a cheap one down because you will regret it. And you will not know until you pick that rug up and suddenly discover your beautiful hardwood floor is destroyed. So it's not worth the risk. Cheap rug pads are a nightmare. Same thing with the tape. That um, I am quite certain that whenever they picked that rug up off the floor with whatever was taping it down, they probably had to sit there with a scraper scraping the tape residue up off the floor, which is almost impossible to do without damaging the floor. So, but that's what it was. So this rug has seen a lot of action over the years, but you know, it's going to be well taken care of now. So let's take a look at that slideshow again. So now that you know what all those steps were, let's see if we can put it together for you. And Colleen, who is clearly a very generous soul, is not only giving me presents, this beautiful rug, but guess what I got in the mail today? Right here. Look at this. This is a Halloween tidbit tray. Now, I know we already have a giveaway going on, but as soon as that giveaway ends, we are doing a new giveaway for the Halloween tidbit tray. So I'm going to show you a picture and I'll show a picture next week when we give away the, the pretty peacock vase immediately. We are going to do a giveaway for Halloween for Colleen's beautiful tidbit tray. This is, God, this is just wonderful. because I want to make sure this is in somebody's home for Halloween. So, thank you, Colleen. This, this is a generous woman, what can I say? We have some great, great viewers. All right, so that's what we got going. We got the Peacock Vase giveaway going on this week. As soon as that's through, 
we've got a Halloween tidbit tray going out and we finished up the rug and we're good to go. So I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great day.